Here it is, the 2023 Honda CRV. And in today's vehicle visionary video, we're going to try to answer the question is it the most versatile SUV in its class? I'll tell you what, it's definitely popular, but I'll be curious to know what your ultimate thoughts are on this particular video. The exterior color on this model is platinum white, it has a gray interior and it is the EXL trim level. Obviously fully redesigned for 2023. And you might be wondering, how much bigger is it? Here are the measurements. The width comes in with an increase of 0.4 inches, so just a tick under half an inch of increase. The wheelbase, that is measured from the center of one tire to the center of the other, increases by 1.6 inches and the overall length from bumper to bumper sees an increase of 2.7 inches. So what that's going to do is give a little bit more length to the overall vehicle. That's going to give a little bit of an improved ride quality. It also means increased interior space. And as we take a look at other changes, you're gonna see the fully redesigned front end, obviously everything fully redesigned, but the front end a little more squared off, a little bit more length than what we saw in the past. It doesn't have that sharp drop and about this portion of the hood, the previous generation drops off a pretty, pretty good little incline there or decline as far as that goes. But in this case, what we're going to have is the line that literally fades in right here, kind of hard to see with this platinum white, I think. But you can see how it fades in right here has a little bit of a slope onto the flat portion of the hood. And then the hood, of course, makes a sharp drop to match the contour of the front fenders. And then we're gonna have the nice large bulge in the middle. Do you think there's something that's needed right here? I don't think so, just because, well, it's the CRV. It's not meant to be high performance or so much aggressive looking. And obviously we'll repeat that same look over here on the right hand side, at least your right, my left. But LED headlights, LED daytime running lights, gonna have the nice large daytime running light right here, as well as doubling for the blinker, that blinking thing right there. That's at all four corners and lets people around you know what you're doing in case you're thinking, how do you make it do that? Now you might notice some blinking with the LED headlights right here as well. You're not going to be able to make your vehicle do that. That's the shutter speed of my GoPro. So in case anyone asks, that's what it is. And we're gonna have the chrome accent piece kind of a front brow of sorts that works its way from right here all the way across. It's gonna have a little bit of a rise and then work its way kind of following the contour of the hood, flattens out, and then obviously we'll finish up on the other side. The gloss black grille, a little bit larger, a little bit wider, the large Honda logo, also the lower grille there. And then as far as the front spoiler goes right here, good to see that that's in a flat black finish. It's not it's not gloss black like we have here. So that means this area is likely to get more dirt, debris, rocks off the road, all that kind of stuff. That's good because this finish will hold up better than this finish will in that case. Also, I don't know if we can see through here, but we do have the air curtains right here. Let's go back here and show you where that comes out right here. That's gonna help to improve gas mileage. And if you're curious about gas mileage, why don't we open the hood and look at one of the in my opinion, best changes here that I'm surprised we're not seeing on other Honda models. Under the hood is the 1.5 liter direct injection turbocharged four cylinder. It's gonna be making 190 horsepower and 179 pounds feet of torque, made it to a continuously variable single speed transmission. But don't worry, it's actually quite well behaved. And that change I was talking about is right here with the hood struts that help to hold, hold the hood up, open it and hold it up. That's a good thing. This is the only Honda model I've seen. These CRVs come standard with this feature. You don't have to go hunting for the manual prop rod to put things in place. You can't even get that these yet on the Honda Civic Type R, which is kind of an interesting surprise. And how about those all important MPGs? What are they with this particular engine combination? 28 city, 34 highway, 30 combined, and a rather healthy 3.3 gallons of gas is what Honda says you should use for every 100 miles you drive your CRV. And continuing on here, redesigned side view mirrors with the EXL trim level. We're gonna obviously have the body colored mirror caps, flat black down here. You will find the turn signal indicators built in. They are manually folding and power adjustable, also heated. You'll see that you have your blind spot monitoring right here. 
You do have Honda sensing, so that's going to be your road departure mitigation, lane keeping assist, adaptive cruise control, traffic jam assist, which if you're wondering, what is traffic jam assist, Tom? That means that at speeds of 40 miles per hour or below, it'll basically drive itself through traffic, managing the brake and the gas and all that good stuff. But if you come to a complete stop for five seconds or more, then it will actually disengage traffic jam assist. Here's what your remote looks like for 2023. Lock, unlock, you can be able to open that power rear tailgate there, remote start. And if you're saying to yourself, somebody's getting too close to your CRV, you can hit the panic button right there. And we're going to have the chrome surround here on the windows. Also, some more of the trim right here. Not gloss black, but I think that's okay in this case. Now, you don't have roof rails up here. Tell me what you think about that. Is that something you'd like to have on your CRV? Obviously, you can. We just don't have those in this particular case. Body colored shark fin antenna and the nice looking and functional rear roof spoiler. That's going to channel air when you're driving down the road over this rear window to actually help with aerodynamic purposes. And it's really not for reducing drag, but more so keeping this rear window clean. But when the window does get dirty, obviously you have the rear window wiper or for when it's raining. Yeah, I would have liked to have seen Honda conceal that away up here. Didn't happen. Not necessarily a big deal. LED tail lights. And I know a lot of people are going to say those look identical to the previous generation. I think I might have a picture somewhere of what they look like side by side. These actually are different to a pretty large degree, but I like how everything works its way down, kind of takes a sharp turn and then comes back. A little bit of a break right here and kind of almost a double J blade look, even though they're kind of laying on their sides right there. They are LED tail lights, clean looking here on the rear, the CRV logo, the Honda logo, and you don't see the exhaust coming out unless you look way down here pretty low, but standing up, pretty hard to see that the exhaust comes out from under the bumper depending on where you stand. And what about tire and wheel size? 235 on the width, so quite a bit of meat on the road. You're gonna have the 60 series sidewall that's gonna help contribute to good ride quality wrapped around the 18 inch wheels. And we'll work our way back here to the rear. We're gonna have the power tailgate here, even on the EXL trim level. Let's talk a little bit about what you'll find back here Cargo lighting obviously going to be on both sides. Going to have the 12 volt power outlet right here. Bag hangers right here. You can hang bags or whatever you want to right there. There is an available cargo cover to go back here if you want it, just not here. And space on each side of what we have here as far as the rear cargo area goes. Just kind of little nooks there. And you can see that you do have the spare tire here. I know that's very important to a lot of you. I can completely understand that. You can tow up to 1,500 pounds. Cargo capacity starts at 36.6 to 39.3 cubic feet. And when you lower these rear seats flat, let's see if we can do this here, if their front seats low it or far enough forward, it is. You're looking at 76.5 cubic feet of max cargo space. And by the way, you might notice that it says hold to set right here. What exactly does that mean? Well, I'm gonna push the door all the way up to its maximum opening height. Then I'm gonna hold the button and listen for all of the beeps. Now we're gonna close that door back again. And when I open it, it's gonna open up all the way to where I just set it. So if you're curious about that, you can change the height of the rear door on your 2023 CRV. And taking a look in through the right side rear door, we're going to have some gloss black trim up here. That looks nice, very well placed because not likely to get a lot of fingerprints on it right there. That's kind of the downside of gloss black, but I think that's a good thing to have in that particular area. Soft touch materials here with the comfortable armrest and then the, well, I call it a door bin, but it's really more of a bottle holder than a door bin, although it could be used as a multitasker, I guess. And just so your rear seat passengers don't forget what they're riding in, there's the CRV logo. And as you can see, the way I have this seat set on the right hand side, it can recline. So that could make for a nice little opportunity for taking a nap for rear seat passengers. And then we're going to have the lone seat back pocket right here. 
and then we're going to have our dual air conditioning vents here on the rear of the center console and you'll notice that there's nothing back here for connectivity that i think should be a standard feature to at least have a couple of usb ports back here but it is what it is in this particular case we'll fold down the armrest here this is good why is it good because you have the armrest here and the drink holders most of the time the drink holders are in the front in this case they're not i like that because you can put drinks in here your rear seat passengers can and they can still at the same time use it as an armrest that's a good thing now one thing that i think a lot of you were probably hoping for a panoramic sunroof as you can see that isn't here. Tell me what your thoughts are on that particular subject. And a lot of the same look of what we saw on the rear doors will be found here on the front doors as well. The same trim right here. We're going to have the brushed aluminum for the door handles and then that same finish right here with the armrest. Comfortable. Larger door bend, however. So you've got a bottle or drink holder back here in the rear and a larger area here that could also be used as a bottle holder as well with the way it's contoured. But there's a lot of space there, kind of that multitasking ability. Again, the CRV logo right there. So if your, pass your passenger says, what am I riding in? I forgot. Just tell them to look down here on the door and they'll quickly remember. Power seats for the driver and the passenger, very comfortable. Obviously going to be heated, heated only in this case. I don't know if you can get the ventilated seats in Canada, but that's the case here. So you're going to see that the gloss black trim works its way all the way across on the dashboard. In fact, all the way to the other side over there. And a very similar look to that of the Honda Civic, that honeycomb finish. You can't really tell for sure where the air conditioning vent stops, but you know where it is because of the adjustment right there. You're going to have the what is known as a glove box that never has any gloves in it, but there it is. And then we do have USB connectivity right here, a 12 volt power outlet and wireless charging. Here is your shifter. Yay for no push button shifters for those of you who don't like push button shifters. And then drive mode selector. You can turn the auto stop start feature off, hill start assist, parking brake, power parking brake and brake hold mode. More of those cup holders right there. A little bit of space right here for, well, whatever you can fit right there and the lid for the center console. It is rather comfortable to use as an armrest. And inside you find the removable tray that can go in a couple of different spots. You could leave that out and take advantage of all of the space that is within. And when you have the angry eyes, well, you won't be able to show your kids unless they're looking at you through the rear view mirror because you don't have the conversation mirror here, but you do have a sunglass holder. That's good. It seems like a lot of vehicles, a lot of car makers are going away from the sunglass holders. We don't see those as much as we used to. Here's your vanity mirror. Hi, everybody. I hope you're having a good day and enjoying the video. And let's see how far back the visor will go. Pretty far back. I think that's going to do a pretty good job of blocking out the sun for the passenger. Obviously, you'll get the same thing on the driver's side. And here on the driver's side, what will you find? Well, you'll find one thing that you won't find on the passenger side, seat memory. You can also adjust those heated power folding side or power adjustable, I should say, not power folding. Kind of got tongue twisted there. They're manually folding, but power adjustable heated side view mirrors. You can adjust those right here. Lock and unlock. You can lock the windows and the controls for all four windows. But one thing you won't find here are the activation for the child safety locks just as it's been for the last couple of generations they're still located here on the rear door so you will actually activate the child safety locks right here in the up position they're inactive when it's in that down position right there they are active so just in case you are kind of curious about that now you know and now that we've stepped in out of the wind it should be easier to hear i'm going to hit the push button start right there and take a look at the dashboard right here very nice looking for 2023. Very similar to that of what we've seen since 2022 with the Honda Civic. Very easy to use, very easy to manage. You can go through a lot of different information on there, obviously, with your steering wheel mounted controls if you want to. You can also see who does and doesn't have their seat belt on. Here's your adaptive cruise control. You'll also manage traffic jam assist right here as well. Control the headlights here. Obviously, the blinker option is here. That thing that I showed you earlier that was blinking, this is how you make that happen. 
you want it to go to the right, you push it into the up position, the same thing to the left, goes into the down position, in case you're saying to yourself, I don't have that option on my vehicle. How does that work? Okay, you probably do know how this functionality works. This is for your front and rear window wipers. And so a very nice setup there. Nice looking steering wheel, a little. And then we'll move on to the, in this case, nine inch touch screen. So you can see what all is here. You can pair your phone, Apple CarPlay, compatibility, all that good stuff is here. You can change your display mode if you want to, and you can go into vehicle settings. A very nice look here with the new graphics for 2023 for this particular model of vehicle. It does look nice, actually. And if you want to change the settings for your power tailgate, let's see what's there. You have keyless open, and you can turn that on and off if you want to right here. We'll go right there and just see what all is available when unlocked or any time is what we have as far as that goes. And then the power open by outer handle. You can also make changes there as well. We won't go through every single little thing there, but just so you know what is there. What about the rear view camera? Multi-camera view. And the thing I like, it's more responsive than ever before. Notice I'm just touching one time. I don't have to worry about it. In the past, previous generation, wasn't quite so quick to respond as it is now. And I talked about those driving modes earlier. Well, what exactly are the driving modes? We've got, let's start here. We're going to go with normal. We've got econ. We also have snow. And it looks like that's all we have in this particular case. You do have the graphics that come up as well, just to let you know what driving mode you're in. Really nice little touch from Honda. The one thing about this new CRV, how does it ride and how does it handle out on the road? Let's get out on the road and find out. All right, we're going to get out on the road for a quick test drive with the CRV. And the thing I noticed immediately when I pulled out of the Honda, Holmes Honda parking lot is that the ride quality does seem to be better. It's not that it was that terribly bad for the 2022 and earlier models, the previous generation, but I must say, not too bad. I don't think that really needed to be improved upon, but Honda seemed to do that anyway. Honda's pretty good at that, at improving upon that, which didn't necessarily need to be improved upon, but they do a good job anyway. So we're gonna get on down the road here. And the good thing about where we are is the fact that this is a pretty rough road. So I'm gonna let you listen and hear what the road noise is like for just a few seconds. Hopefully my lapel mic does a good job of picking that up. It's really not bad, at least compared to some of the other vehicles I've driven. Some people might say it's really bad, some people might not. It just depends on who you are and what you're used to. But the one thing I definitely notice here is that with the 190 horsepower, the acceleration still seems to be very good. You'll be able to get down the road with absolutely no problem, I believe, in pretty much every scenario. Even if you have a full load of passengers, and maybe some luggage back there for a trip or whatever the case is, I think it's going to be good. The ride quality is good. It's comfortable, but so is the seating, and that's really important. You may not understand why I'm saying that, but when you get into a vehicle that rides uncomfortably, we'll say, sometimes it's because the shocks and the suspension are stiff. Sometimes it's because the seating itself is not comfortable. Sometimes you can have a combination of both. In this case, you have a good solid combination of both being comfortable and working well together. So that is a good thing. That's a fact. Pretty easy to see out of. But the good thing is that no matter what, you can see what's going on around you. You have the blind spot monitoring, so that's always a good thing. And we're going to hop out here on the road, spinning the tires just a little bit. Wow, not too bad, actually. Not meaning to do that, but I just want to get up to highway speed here at 65 miles per hour, and we're there right now. That gives you a little bit of an idea of what you can expect. And obviously, this isn't the most powerful drivetrain available for these CRVs. You have another option that makes 204 horsepower with the hybrid powertrain. Depending on what your situation is, well, you can choose accordingly. So tell me what you think down in the comments. Is the 2023 Honda CRV the most usable and versatile SUV in its class? Tell me what your answer is 
and tell me in a couple of sentences or whatever you wish to do, you can do it more than a couple, or if you can do it in one, why you answered the way that you did. Gotta say a special thanks to my friends at Holmes Honda here in Shreveport, Louisiana for loaning me this Honda CRV EXL for the day. And a special thanks to all of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video and want to learn about other vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now, and I will see you there.